Hello and welcome to my channel. You may or may not be aware, but this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And two years ago when I first started this channel, this was the month where I kind of shifted from doing pop culture content and shifted into talking a little bit about the things that had been on my mind and things that I struggled with when it came to my mental health. Those videos started picking up a lot of traction. One video in particular did very well and continues to do well to this day. And it continues to bring new subscribers to my channel to this day, new eyes on the channel to this day. Um, I never expected that when I first posted it. And uh, I will always keep that as a reminder that you can never control the response of what you put out on the internet. However, last year during this time, I decided to take a little space away from the internet because I felt like that was the best thing for my mental health at that time. And I think I posted maybe two videos in the month of May last year. This year though, I'm gonna kind of go back to my roots. And 2022, 2023, this time period has been such a interesting period for me um, when it comes to my inner growth as a person when it comes to my mental health and when it comes to my relationship with the internet. And so there are some things I'd like to discuss, some uh, some 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 circles I'd like to bring to a closing point. And I'm doing this for the same reasons that I did it before several years ago. And that is because I feel like if I share what I want to share, it could possibly help someone else. So in this first video of my little mental health month series, I'm gonna be talking about my fertility journey because I do feel that it is something that a lot of people can relate to, especially women in their 30s, especially black women. I'm also sharing it because I came to you all multiple times, multiple times, and told you about the fact that I wanted to become a mom and then I was not gonna be a mom and then wait, no, I'm gonna do it again. And then I'm gonna be a single mom by choice. And now that my fertility journey has ended, for me, for, for better or for worse, I'm, I'm done chasing it. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why. There have been so many things that I've realized about myself and the reality of motherhood. And I just think that this video could close some conversations and open up some other ones. So first of all, let's talk about the semantics of wanting to become a single mom by choice. So when I first shared that with you all, I think it was in November of 2022, in this video right here, I talked about how there had been some things going on behind the scenes in my life, but they had settled at the time. And I had gone to my main support system at that time and I had said, hey, I am going, I'm ready to pursue motherhood, even if it means I have to pursue it alone. And the moment everyone was like, hooray, you can do this. You, you've got it, it's great. And I should mention that everyone was basically just my parents, but um, that was kind of my vibe. That's what I was gonna do. And I began to set myself up for this journey, which meant that I had to make sure I found a good doctor, which meant that I had to make sure I was aware of the fertility clinics and the cryobanks and all of that good stuff that I that I may have access to, which meant I had to check my insurance and see, okay, what can I afford? What can I not afford? And I got myself ready for this year to be the year that I really pursued that dream with all of my heart. because. As I stated in this video a couple years ago, my biggest block to motherhood at that time or so I thought was the fact that I wanted to raise a baby with a partner. And um, I'd always had a very hard time locking that down, especially in my 30s. And so what I decided to do going forward into this year was to just forget it. I'm just gonna do it myself. I'm gonna go for it alone. There are so many people that do that. The second you enter in single mom by choice here on YouTube, you are flooded with stories of women who have gotten to a certain age and they've decided if I want to build a biological family, I have to do it alone. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to share some of these women's accounts and stories with you um, in the description box below, because even though I'm no longer on that journey, I have found so many resources, got so many of my questions answered, and am now following along with several people's journeys from their insemination to them having a healthy baby. And I think it, it it's a very powerful thing, and there's a lot of resources out there for people that are going on that journey. And for anyone who doesn't understand why someone would go on that journey, let me make something clear. Being a woman 
is being constantly reminded about and being constantly talked to about your life in relation to how you want to pursue parenthood. For the majority of us, from the time that we're like little kids, our bodies are reminding us every month that, hey, you could have been a mom this month. We're going through hormonal changes. We're going through physical changes. And most of that can be tied back to our relationship with motherhood. Are we about to give birth? Did our did, did we just pass a window to have gotten pregnant? Or are we going to pursue that? I mean, it is constantly something our bodies are dealing with all the time for the majority of us. If your body is healthy, right? Um, you go to the doctor for a checkup. One of the first questions they ask you is, when was your last cycle? You don't, you, I mean, that, I mean, you never get to really escape it as a woman. And then if you're sexually active or you're dealing with another physical issue, you might have to take pills that are directly connected to how your body performs the act of menstruation. I mean, there is such a connection that we have at all times with that subject, whether we want to have it or not. I want to say that one of the reasons why I decided to share my journey was that I was, I did not see a lot of women in my 30s or in their 30s, excuse me, talking about wanting to be parents, but not being in a situation where they could make it happen. Instead, what I saw consistently was people who were child-free by choice and excited. And they were like, you can't make me have kids. You can't tell me I should have kids. Get off my back. And I wanna say this now for the record, I'm very jealous of those types of people. Um, I would have had a much happier and more productive 30s, and this is why I'm looking towards, I'm looking forward to my 40s so much, but I would have had a very much happier and productive 30s if the weight of motherhood had been lifted from my back. And so I see women all the time, you know, debating with strangers online and proclaiming that, you know, no one will change their mind and they don't want to have kids. And, and honestly, I wish that that's how my brain worked because you can make decisions for yourself. You can be content with not having a partner for longer, I think at least, because I tied partnership to whatever. But uh, there's just a lot more, a lot more peace that you can have, unless of course you're being bombarded with criticisms and things from the outside world. But in my opinion, there's a lot more inner peace that you can have when you're like, hey, I don't care what my body's doing. I'm never opening that door to motherhood. Sorry, not interested. Versus someone who, like me, was, I mean, just dragged by their own emotions, their own mental health, their own feelings of running out of time. Felt like my biological clock was whooping my ass every year of my 30s. And so I would have loved to be a happily child-free by choice person. Would have loved it. However, that's not who I was. And I felt like there needed to be something, some kind of content online, some kind of conversation happening around being child-free, but not by choice. And I ended up finding an online community. I found a, I found literature. I found, I found a lot. And so I just wanted to share what I found and how I was using that to kind of move through this decade of my life that I thought would be filled with pregnancies and family building and all that stuff. So getting to the end of that decade, I had decided eventually that I was going to go about having a baby on my own, despite, despite all the extremely negative rhetoric out there about women having babies on their own. I remember being in the sixth grade and there was a teacher who apparently or supposedly got pregnant on her own and she was made fun of. She she was mocked. And I think it's always been kind of a taboo thing. Like if you go to a sperm bank, people always kind of ask like, well, what is wrong with you? So I think a lot of people have to fight through that before they will go and get sperm. I think you know, also being like an older woman um, and all of the misogynistic content that's out now about women hitting the wall at 25. So if you get to my age and you still haven't had a child yet, well, it's your fault. You know, you there are probably great men out there. You didn't settle. Who can who can forget how uh, Lolo Jones was was mocked online for? And I don't know Lolo Jones. I know her dating history and anything about that. All, all I know is the way the Internet reacted when she still wasn't married at 40 and she was being open about her fertility journey and people tore her up. There's a lot of stigma around a woman going out and starting a family on her own. You know, that's something that I was aware of. And I was like, OK, you know, I can fight through that. That's fine because I don't care what people think, because I know my journey. I know what I've run into. And then there's a lot of stigma about black women going and getting sperm to have babies, because if you know anything about that industry, 
then you know that there's not a lot of black sperm available. In fact, this is something that Debrat recently came forward about on social media. And I will say that she did not come about it in the right way because what she did was she ended up, she made fun of the physical uh, look of a black donor and people took that just all the wrong ways in the world that they could take it. But what she should have said was just, there is an incredible lack of black donors. And so we felt that we we made the best choice with with what was available to us. She still would have got slammed because without people actually being in the situation, they don't know about it. And there was an article that someone sent me that they had written about it. Um, it's it's here. I put it here on the screen. But it's well documented that when it comes to black donors, there's just not a lot of choice. So for a lot of black women, when they end up having a baby with a donor, they do end up having a biracial baby. Some people are okay with that. Some people are not. But that was another stigma that I was looking at. And then. And then when you just think about in general, the attitude that people have towards black single mothers, um, all I have to do is go on social media. And I've talked about this before, but there is a there is people, people don't like it. They do not like it, especially when you hear or see a lot of the content from young women, women under 30. They have um, women under 25, I would say they have a very loud voice on social media. And a lot of the things they talk about um, are very anti they, I could, t I could sit here all day and talk about the difference between the millennial voice and the Gen Z voice on social media. But all I'll say is that um, there are people who are, there are young women who are very, very adamant that by 30, they will be married. They will have a partner who does this for them. They will live a soft life afforded to them by their partner. And under no circumstances will they become a single parent and add to the statistics of black single parenthood, black single motherhood, excuse me. And they are militant about it. And they be ripping folks up <laughs> about that online. And, you know, people try and explain to them, hey, it's not always someone's goal. You know, you can get married and end up uh, a married single parent. You can, you know, it's that happens. But they're not the only ones. They're not the only voice that's very militantly against the idea of black single motherhood all you have to do also is listen to any podcast and you will hear men ripping apart black women for being single mothers for ruining the black family all on their own this is a conversation that's been happening for years and the fault sometimes always defaults to the woman even though we do live in a very pro-natalist country and we do live in a place where a lot of times women's reproductive rights are ignored and women's needs are ignored there's the issue is so multifaceted, so nuanced, and I was aware of all the negative stigmas, and I was aware of all of that negative weight, and I still wanted to become a mom so badly at that time that I was like, who cares? I'm going on my journey. And so I began it. And in January, I went to my first doctor's appointment. And I went into that parking lot, and I was blaring uh, C.C. Winans' um, Believe For It, and uh, it's a great song. And also, yeah, I was blaring, I was blaring that song. And I was like, I am, I'm believing for it. And I'd already named my child. And, uh, you know, I was like, I'm believing for you, name redacted. And um, I went in and this is the first appointment that I'd been to, first lady doctor that I'd been to since 2021. And in 2021, I had a basic exam and I was told that, I had uh, fibroids, which fibroids are a non-cancerous tumor that can appear in and around the uterus and the uterine lining. And it happens a lot to women in their childbearing ages. And it happens a lot to black women. And so I was told that I had fibroids actually way back in 2018, but people were like, it's so small, you know, don't worry about it. 2021, I went in and they were like, hmm, you might want to worry about it. And I was so heartbroken by that because a lot, as if you've ever been to um, the doctor and they've told you you've had fibroids, especially if they're bigger, and if you're around my age, what they will tell you is your choices are, uh, they, they lead with the hysterectomy first, which is when they take everything out, which is so heart-wrenching, especially if you wanted a baby. Um, you're basically told, you know, your, your time is up. It's, it's over and it's just, it's so heartbreaking. And then they also will talk about other options as well, but it's just, it's jolting. For them to say, okay, so you're, uh, we could do a hysterectomy if you don't want kids, or we do. It's just that word to me was just so heartbreaking. I I left the doctor's office and I just went outside and cried. I was like, how is this? How how did I get here already? But anyway, that was 2021. And after I cried it out, I decided to also block it out. I left a job I was at. I got into a new career of content creation. I had to work some things out with my insurance, you know, whatever. So I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna. Mm, 
can't even hear them. And in some kind of way, I got it into my mind that my fibroids were going to magically just shrink and go away and I was going to be fine. Well, here I was January of 2023, believing for it. And yeah, simple pelvic exam. The doctor was like, girl, mm mm-mm. This don't look good. Because the thing is, is when you have fibroids, it's not a blockage to being able to reproduce at all. No, people get pregnant and deliver with fibroids. The issue is their size and whether or not anything can actually grow in the uterus. And so I had to go in and do an ultrasound. And after the ultrasound, I was re- I was uh, referred to another doctor. And when I got to that doctor, I was told I had so many and they were so big that... I was going to have to have a myomectomy. So what I'm realizing now that I'm going back and and editing this and watching it back is that I never told you all the different types of treatment options. So if you have fibroids and you have been to the doctor, then you probably already know this. If you don't know this, I'm going to explain it now. So basically to treat fibroids, there's a couple different options. You can get a hysterectomy, which is when they take all your, your, your reproductive, you know, they they take the uterus out. Basically you can get, um, a laparoscopic myomectomy, which is a less invasive myomectomy where they just go in and try to move the fibroids, or you can get a open myomectomy where they go in and they really try and get in there and, and get everything. The open myomectomy is a longer surgery and is based on the amount of fibroids you have and the size of those fibroids. And so, um, you know, your doctor might tell you one or two of those is your options based on your body and what's going on. You can also do something called uterine fibroid embolization, which is like a laser kind of treatment, I believe, where they go in and uh, uh, uterine artery embolization, excuse me, they go in and they it's really non-invasive and uh, the healing time is supposed to be less, um, but it's not always covered by all insurances and not all doctors do it. And depending on the size of your fibroids, it might not be suggested to you. Of course, if you've been on social media, you've probably also heard about things like castor oil packs or special kinds of tea, or um, there's just, there's lots of homeopathic remedies people try and do as well. And really every woman's body is different and it's going to respond to different things. And so it's a decision you kind of have to make for yourself with your doctor. But I did not explain that earlier earlier. And so I realized now watching it back, I never even mentioned a myomectomy. So I'm mentioning it, mentioning it now, excuse me. But even then they wouldn't be able to remove everything. And I might not even have enough uterus to carry a child. I was broken. I was broken. Um, the beginning of February was a, was the start of an incredibly emotional and depressing time in my life. And um, I was hurt. I was hurt. And uh, it was at that point, though, too, that I decided to finally put this dream in the dirt. So let me explain something. Um, That happened at the beginning of February. And I got to the end of March, when I finally, I'd had an MRI, like, you know, so let's get to the bottom of this. Let's see what's going on. And I went to meet with my doctor. And at that point, by the time I got to the end of March, I knew I no longer want to follow this journey. Kind of went back to basics with myself. And I realized that I never wanted to be a mom on my own. While I love, I love seeing women do it. I love seeing women feel that feeling. And in spite of the fact that dating is hell and it's, you know, we, we be aging regardless of whether or not the right guy comes in. And uh, despite the fact that our bodies are all different and this person might have no eggs left at 29 and this person might be able to reproduce at 51. Like we don't, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a crazy experience. And unfortunately some of us have to take the reins ourselves because socially we're not, we're, we're not finding what we want. Um, Despite me really, really respecting that choice and respecting women who take that choice and almost wanting to go that route myself, ultimately, I just that's that's actually not what I want. And it was made really clear to me when I got home from my birthday trip that I took a couple months ago and I was sick and I have a dog. And he is a very, very hyper, hyper, hyper teenage puppy. And. I was barely able to hold my head up. My congestion was so bad, but he still needed to eat and he still needs to be walked. And I live on like the top floor of my complex. And 
my body was aching. Did I have, I had a fever, a light fever, but that he still needs to be taken care of. Three times a day, at least. You got to take him out, have him walk, do whatever. Got to feed him. Got to pay attention to him because he's, he's active. I said to myself, oh my God, what if he was a baby? And you were sitting up here sick. Had a fever and had a congestion and you got this sick baby here. Like, you better be glad this is just a dog. And so as I'm going through all this, I also realized, you know, I just came in from out of town. I ain't got no groceries. So I, I call the person I can count on most in the whole world, my dad, and he races down, you know, eventually and does his best. But my dad's almost 70 years old. How much longer is he going to be able to do that? And I realized, I said, I don't have the village I would need to be able to really do this right. And not that there's anything wrong with the village that I have, but you want to make sure before you make a decision like this, that you're not in, in you making this decision, you're not putting extra weight on people that are outside of you. You want to make sure that this is something that you would be able to 100% handle by yourself. So in my situation, I would be able to hire a night nurse. I'd be able to hire a nanny. I always imagined raising children to be a collaborative venture. And to do it without that collaboration is outside of who I am. And sure, I could power through and, you know, get my myomectomy, which I'm going to get anyway for health reasons, but I get my myomectomy. I could find my sperm. I could, you know, hope maybe, maybe even get pregnant. I don't know. But then once the baby gets here, the reality of having someone there to help you with the weight when you're sick, having someone there when you're emo you're going through something to take to take that off you. And there's a lot of people who raise babies every day in situations that are not healthy, that are not collaborative, that are not equal. And I don't want to add myself to that percentage and that population on purpose. In a sense, finding out that my road to parenthood would be blocked biologically or the mountain would be really high for me to climb biologically it made it easier for me to come back to myself and say, is this even something you wanted to do this way? Do you even, do, is, this how, is this how you really wanted to do this? And the, the answer was no. And those two factors together, my biology and my social reality made me ultimately decide to close the door on my fertility journey. And when I tell you, it's so much better on this side for me at least. My mental health suffered my entire 30s because I thought I wasn't being my full self if I wasn't a mom. I didn't believe that I would be worth it to a potential partner if I couldn't produce a whole starting lineup of kids. And I also was putting too much emphasis on partnership because time was running out and I needed to meet someone in order for this thing to happen. And once I closed the door, and I decided that it's not for me, like I'm, I'm good. A lot of things were released. Um, I mean, a lot was released. And I think a lot of people had questions whenever I started uh, watching, like whenever I could watch dating shows, people who have been following along with my content and know how sensitive I was to certain things. So watching something like Love is Blind and watching people get married and do something, you know, that kind of thing. I think people were probably like very surprised. Like, how, how, how are you doing this? And ultimately all those things were tied together for me. Fertility journey, fertility failure, being able to be a parent, that it, meeting someone in the right. Once I decided it's all above me now. Like if I, if it's, I'm good. It's, it's too much of an uphill battle for me to fight. It's fine. I'm, I'm let, when, once I released it, I was able to take in so many other things and it has been a very beautiful changing of the guard internally for me. There is so much content out there for women who are child free, not by choice. I know because I went looking for it when I needed to see that that voice. And I want to acknowledge that my journey is a little bit different. I, I'm, you know, I'm not married to someone and haven't been trying for years to conceive. I'm not, you know, I've, I've definitely had the obstacles against me the whole time. So I think for me, it's more like a surrender than it is a, uh, a complete walk away from the desire. But, um, I'm happy that when I see the pain, when I see the suffering, when I see what people are dealing with when they're in that space, I'm happy I can look at that and know that that's in my rear view. And um, when I when I turned 30, I was sad. I was like, oh, I don't know what this decade, I don't know. 
But I'm very much so looking forward to my 40s, very much. I'm no longer looking at my future with a sense of dread or a sense of emptiness because of what didn't happen. If it was supposed to happen, and I'm only speaking for me here, so I'm not, nobody else needs to come to this conclusion, but I know for me, all of the obstacles, all of the redirection, all the, to not even get to a place where I can even try to healthfully have a baby with the right person at the right time. Because there was a time where it wasn't a single fibroid to be found on me. And now I could give them away like lemonade at a lemonade stand. I got, I got a lot of them. But there was a time where that wasn't my reality. And that time is not anymore. So I look at that and I'm like, all those obstacles, all those redirections, all those restrictions, like it is what it is. I That's not the path that I'm supposed to walk in my life. And so I'm looking forward to what the rest of it would be. And I'm excited about the new perspective that I have on on all things. It's 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 good on this side. Now, I do want to say I am not opposed to stepmom. I'm not opposed to stepping into my stepmom era. I'm not opposed to being a step grandma. Hey man, I could get married at 55 and be a step grandma. Cool. Um, I'm also not opposed to, you know, once things get more solid, I think in my life, I'm not opposed to being a foster parent. I'm not, there's so many different ways if you do have that maternal urge and you are open to it, to showing that to uh, whoever might need it. But when it comes to going on my own fertility journey, um, I have let it go for the better. It is for the better. And um, I am wanting to update you all on that, especially here in Mental Health Month, because that is something I struggled with and it affected how I felt about myself as a dating person. It affected how I felt about myself as a single person. It affected how I felt about my entire womanhood journey as a whole. Um, I felt very ashamed that I never even got to a certain point. And now I look back and I'm like, maybe it was for your good. Because I never know. Parenthood is a, it's it's a, you never know how it'll treat you. And ultimately, I was trying to go after it in a way that didn't really line up with who I really am. I don't want to do it by myself. I need a partner if I'm going to raise a human being. And so it it is well with me. And if you're going through a time in life where you're grieving, especially if you are a single person and you have been single all your 30s or whatever, and you never got the chance to try, especially if you're a single woman, there will be a time where you have to grieve it. And I was grieving loudly these past few years. When I was making those videos and I was saying that that was grief, it was me trying to come to terms with what my future might be. And so, um, uh, it was a process I needed to go through. And as I've said many times in this video, it is better here on this side. And I'm grateful to be where I am with it. All right, so that is the end of my first little video. Is there anything that you grieved um, in your 30s or beyond? I don't think we talk enough as adults about things we had to walk away from. Is there anything that you put in a tomb? You grieved it and it resurrected itself. And you were like, whoa, I thought I thought I would never have that. If so, please feel free to share in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.